Happy Maker Monday. This is month three of Traverse. So we've made those two rows already, month one and month two. Month three is going to make this row right here with those sort of um, scalloped edges. So the way the pattern is written, you sew curved seams and that's cool. I like the way that she puts it in here because you make it kind of oversized and then you trim it down to make it good. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it as an applique. So one of the things that I really like to do and the thing that I put into my um, barrel of fun quilt that I put in Quilt Sampler Magazine is to applique my curved edges. And the way that I like to do that is by using Alex Anderson's Print and Piece Fuse. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this. You do it whichever way you prefer, but I think this is a really fun skill set to have, especially if you don't like sewing curves or you don't like the idea of um, applique. If you like the look of raw edge applique, but you don't want to do the actual needle turn thing, this is a really good way to get there. Okay, so we're going to set up our space and show you some tricks. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna suggest is a light box. This makes tracing any sort of designs easier. The reason I like this light box is you can turn it on and it's on a really low setting or you can turn it all the way up to like brightness of the sun. This is the template that comes with your pattern. If you wanna do the curved piecing, then you cut one fabric out of this and the background fabric out of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the template but we're gonna use the dotted line inside instead of the solid line on the outside. So I took a piece of print and piece. The reason that this is fun is you just need to trace it out one time and then you can make copies in your printer. So what I did was I put my print and piece on top of my template here and you can see where I drew right on the dotted line. You can use the paper as effectively as possible so you don't waste as much. So what I did here was I drew my first semicircle right there and then I turned my paper around and I drew the other side so we can share this consistent line okay I just did this with a regular marking pen to mark it on there because we're going to cut right on this line a couple of tips with working with print and piece there is a shiny side let's turn the light off there is a shiny side that has sort of um, shiny bumps on it and then there's a smooth side I like to print on the smooth side or mark on the smooth side because this is the side that's going to get fused down. So what I did was I drew out my semicircles. We needed, I think, 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We needed 12 semicircles, okay? And I can get six on each sheet. So I drew these out. When you go to take these to your printer, if you have a laser printer, a couple of tips. You can just draw this on paper, so if you mess it up, it doesn't matter. You can draw this on paper and you can take it to your, your copier. Your copier has a setting in it that you might not even know about, or your laser printer does too, where when you feed the paper into the feeder, on the back side of the printer, there's a little door you can open so that the paper just runs straight through. It doesn't come up through all of the mechanisms that roll it up to come out of the top. Do yourself that favor and open the box in the back of your printer. There's a little door that opens up. This will make the paper kind of slide straight through because what happens in, especially in a laser printer, is that it'll get kind of warm in those rollers and it can melt this backing, okay? So if you open up that door in the back, it's gonna slide right through. I never have any problems with it, okay? Then we're just gonna take a pair of scissors and cut these all out. You just cut them out right on the line. Try to get as smooth as possible because this is gonna be your actual template. So instead of cutting out curved pieces of fabric, you're gonna cut out curved iron-on templates, okay? So we're gonna cut all of these out, and then we're gonna press them on our fabric, okay? So we're gonna to go to the ironing board, and I'm gonna show you some tricks there. Okay, so month three uses four different color fabrics. This dark blue is color Q, the light teal is color V, the dark teal is color U, and this sort of pretty bright green is color Y. So before we started the video, I already made the two teal color semicircles, so we're gonna get rid of that fabric and I'm gonna show you what to do on the green fabric. The blue fabric is really simple. We simply cut, the pattern tells you what size to cut your blocks. 
So this, we cut two long strips and then we're gonna subcut them into smaller strips, but the pattern tells you what size those need to be. The pattern also tells you to cut these into smaller pieces because that's how you're gonna cut your circles. Since we're gonna do this as an applique, you don't need to do that. You can just leave this as one long strip, okay? My iron is turned on the high heat setting with no steam. I'm gonna take my semicircles the shiny side is going to go down on my fabric. Since this fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side, it doesn't really matter. I want to make sure that I've got at least a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, which I do. One of the tips I like to give people when you're working with print and piece views is it likes a hot, dry iron. So we're going to press this down. Again, the shiny side is down on our fabric. If you press it the first time and you rub your fingers along it and it raises up, it's not hot enough yet. Go back and iron it again. But if your iron is hot enough, this stuff sticks down really quickly. If you're finding that it's not fusing as fast as you would like, your iron should be hotter. Okay, so you saw how fast that fused. I'm going to lay these out next to each other. You can put this all the way down to the bottom if you like. You can give it a little bit of buffer room. Make sure you have at least a half an inch between the two arcs. Okay, and we're just gonna press these all down. So this particular color has more circles than the other two colors. But again, it does not take long to fuse them all down. Once we get them all fused on the strip, we're gonna cut these out. I just cut mine out with scissors. And because we're gonna turn these, these raw edges over, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just kind of eyeball it. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. All right, so we've got all of our pieces fused down. I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut them apart. So once you have all your pieces cut apart, this part's the fun part. I really like this part. We're just gonna freehand about a quarter of an inch. If making a quarter inch makes you kind of crazy or you're worried that it's gonna be too small, in this instance, it's better to make your seam allowance too big instead of too small. So you can cut it closer to like a 3 8 if you like. Doesn't matter that much, but you don't wanna have it too skinny. Okay, so we're just gonna cut around the curved part. I'm also going to snip in the curve about halfway. Don't cut all the way to the paper. I'm just going to snip this about halfway, okay? These Kai scissors are really sharp right on the point, so they snip really nicely. But you can see that I didn't cut all the way to the paper, okay? So once you have all those snipped, I'm going to use my Quilter Select glue stick. This is my absolute favorite glue stick. Make sure you have it rolled up enough that you can get a good line. And mark a line, I usually do about the first half. See how it looks like a highlighter? And then I just take my finger and roll the sections over. The paper is stiff enough that if you just sort of roll your finger over the paper, the fabric's gonna stop at the edge of the paper. Okay, so this is why it doesn't matter if your seam allowance is a little bit big because it's all going to get tucked to the back anyway. And by cutting those little slits in it, the fabric rolls over nicely. So see how it's okay that the fabric is kind of piled on top of itself where we made those slits? That's okay. It doesn't matter if the back is perfectly flat. What we're looking for is a nice smooth curve. Okay, so I'll show you that one more time. We're just going to trim all the way around. and then snip your slits. So what I usually do is I prep this all at once, I sit down, watch some TV, and then roll the edges of your fabric, okay? Now here's another little thing, a hot tip I like about this glue stick. If you get the glue stick out here, don't worry about it. Once this glue dries, it's not sticky anymore. And once this glue dries, it disappears. So as long as you let it dry and you don't stick anything to it, it's just gonna go away. It'll just sort of dissipate, okay? So I've got, all, I've got all my edges folded over like that. 
and then we're going to stitch them down. I'm gonna give you a couple of different ways to stitch this, and then um, I'm gonna show you to join the blocks together. So let's go sew. So the pattern tells you to cut out the template shape of the dark background, but again, since we're not doing the template, what I did was I measured the size of the template, and then I cut my blue background to be the same size as the square part of the template. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to take our our half or, or semicircle. Remember that there's there's extra fabric down here. There's a couple things you can do. You can either cut the fabric off there, or you can just line the edge up. We're going to trim this down anyway, so I like having a little bit extra hangover. You can do it any way you like. It really doesn't matter. You can even line up the fabric to the very end. What matters is in the trimming that they're all consistent, and I'm going to show you how to do that too. So I like to use a 505 spray to put this on because it only has to hold it in place long enough to sew it. Make sure that you have, it doesn't have to be equal, but just that you have more than a quarter inch on either side of your semicircles. I use over the trash can because then if there's overspray, it doesn't really matter. And I just spray a little bit of 505, not much. It gets on your fingers, it's okay, it washes off. And we're gonna put the half circle on top of the blue and just stick it down. And now you don't have to pin anything, it's on there so that you can do the applique stitch, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of different applique stitches. One, I'm gonna use a matching color thread. Actually, I'm gonna use a thread that will work for both of these greens, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it with an invisible thread. So I have a matching color or fill thread in my machine. And I'm going to use what we call a triple, what's it called, a triple, a quilting applique stitch. So what this stitch does is it takes three tiny stitches and then it hops in a little bit. And since I'm using a matching color thread, theoretically, it should pretty much blend in. So I like using an open toe foot because I can ride the very edge of the applique in that crack of the open toe foot. Drop your needle to make sure it lines up where you want it. And then you're just gonna slowly stitch around the circle. And see how it takes like three small stitches and then it hops in onto the fabric. By using a matching thread, it's really gonna just kind of look invisible. It's a really small stitch so it's not gonna look like a decorative stitch. It's, it looks like an applique stitch, okay? And I'm using the factory setting on my machine, so they're very small little hopping stitches. I also have the pivot function turned on on my machine so that when I get to a part where the fabric underneath starts to kind of curve a little bit, I can pick it up and, and the foot will come up so that the fabric will release and then you get a nice smooth stitch, okay? If you do need to stop stitching for a second, make sure that you're not on the inside of the hop. Because if you try to turn it and line it up, you're gonna end up with a V instead of a straight line, which isn't the end of the world because these are really small stitches. So don't overthink this too much. I'm just gonna stitch all the way around to the end of the circle, okay? Now, since I used a matching thread, you can't even really see it. It just sort of goes away. So see how this stitch works? There's little tiny stitches on the outside and then little hoppy stitches that come in. But again, since I used a matching thread, it all works. If the idea of using a matching thread doesn't work for you, you can use a monofilament thread. This one is an R fill. I also really like the Quilter Select clear thread. It's nylon, so it doesn't stretch and it will make a really nice stitch. So you can do this stitch with a matching thread, or you can do that stitch with a clear thread. You can also use a straight stitch if you prefer to, with either the matching thread or the clear thread. So I'm gonna put clear thread in my machine and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to have a straight stitch along the outside. You might just play around with different stitches and see which one you like better. You do have extra fabric in this kit, so if you, you know, if you make one and you don't like it and you want to change it up, don't worry about it. You have enough fabric to do that with. Okay? 
So I've changed out my thread for a clear thread. I'm gonna put on a straight stitch. And then I can just stitch really close to the edge of this. So if you don't like the idea of the decorative stitch or it makes you nervous that you're gonna stitch on both colors of fabric, you can do this too. So you can do this with the matching thread or you can do it with a clear thread. Either way, because of the nature of this fabric, it's all gonna sink in and it's gonna blend in really nicely. So I would suggest that you play around a little bit with different techniques and see what you like better. So I'm just gonna sew this and then I'm gonna show you the differences. Okay, so these are two different colors of green. This is the one that I use the matching thread. This is the one that I use the clear thread. So only up real close do you see the tiny little holes. This isn't going to be obnoxious or anything. And once you quilt this, you're not even going to see those clear stitching lines. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to trim these blocks up and sew them together. We're almost done. Okay. So the pattern tells you what size you need to trim these blocks down. I want to have a quarter inch either side of the circle. Okay. And I want to make sure that the top part of my circles are all trimmed evenly. So what I did to make that happen was I made, see how they, they line up the same size and we've got a quarter inch either side. What I did was I took a little bit of glow line tape. I love this stuff for marking my rulers because it makes me a little itchy to like mark on my rulers because then I've got to clean it off with solvent and that can take the, the lines off and whatever. So what I did was I decided where I wanted this to be. I wanted to have an inch and a quarter from the top part of my curve to the end of my block because then by the time I sew that quarter inch away, there's an inch between here and the end of my block, okay? So I figured out where that was, and for this particular block, I marked that off here at this two and three quarter inch line. All right, and like I said, the pattern tells you how big that this needs to be. I do want to make sure that I'm marking off a, or I'm cutting off a little bit of this edge over here because anytime you're doing a curve or an applique, the edge never really ends up perfectly straight. So by making it oversized and trimming it down, we're gonna make it perfect, all right? So I'm gonna line up my pink line at the top of my semicircle, and I'm gonna trim these two sides. So what I have looked for is my pink line that marks the top of my curve and a quarter inch from the edge of my curve to the end of, my, of where I trimmed it. Then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna trim this back down to the size that the pattern calls for. I'm going to make sure that I've got a quarter inch on this end as well. And then I'm going to trim this block to the size that the pattern calls for. Okay, so I'm going to do that with all 12 of my circles. And they're going to look like this and we're going to line them up based on how the picture is lined up. I've already sewn together a couple of them. So here's our lighter color of teal, right? So some of them are already together. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting these together. Now, to put these together, I'm gonna to give you a couple of tips. I'm gonna give you one more tip in the, seam, in the seam setting. And the last thing to finish off the law, or finish off the ends is the pattern tells you how wide of a piece to cut on the very ends to make it the right measurement. Um, that's an easy add-on. So we're gonna sew these two blocks together and I'm gonna give you a little tip on that as well. So I'm gonna take, and the, there's 12 of these semicircles in the row, and I'm just gonna sew them together two at a time. And then once I have two, I'll sew those two together until I have three sets of four, and then I'll, I'll just sew the row together. So I have put my quarter inch piecing foot on my machine, and I took the clear thread out and put my piecing thread back in. So I'm gonna take my two blocks, I'm gonna put them right sides together. What we really ultimately wanna do is we wanna have a quarter inch, that's why we trimmed this a quarter inch from the edge of our circle to the edge of our, the raw edge of our fabric. Because that seam allowance is going to end up making our semicircles line up to each other. And it's gonna take a, it's gonna make them look like a continuous shape. So I'm gonna use my quarter inch piecing foot 
and join these together. Now, if you stitch over that stabilizer paper, it's okay because that's, that's going to set those arcs together as well. Here's the beauty of this printing piece and what I really like about it. It's a semi wash away stabilizer. So what that means is wherever we have stitched into it, we're gonna quilt this quilt like normal, we're gonna wash it, and when we wash it, the fibers that are underneath the threads are gonna stay and the rest is gonna wash away, but it really stabilizes the applique and the quilting, okay? So this is what we should end up with, is six sets of semicircles that basically touch each other, okay? I'm gonna press to one side, it doesn't really matter which side because by the time you join these rows together, they're all gonna be long strips, okay? So I'm going to make, I'm gonna look at my pattern and I'm gonna set them out and sew all 12 together. And when I come back, we'll have a finished row. All right, so I've got my whole strip sewn together. I um, measured out the buffer ends that the pattern calls for. That What this does is it just makes it the same length as all the other rows that you're gonna make. So I've got my whole long strip here and we're gonna add this to our wall of we're gonna add this to our wall of strips. It's pretty easy, right? It didn't take very long. So I hope you like this technique and we'll use it in your applique all the time. So we have all of the items that we used in today's lesson listed above, or if you're in the app, they're listed in the app. Um, but I really like these tools and I think they make things go a lot easier. All right, so we'll see you next month.